The way that ball has been zipped around the bases so far, the dazzling infield plays both teams have been pulling off, and the great running catches of long flies, the outfield is spectacular. The village of Sheridan, population 651, nestled in the bosom of rural western Michigan. There is something about the history of Sheridan that most people don't know, something lost to almost all history and record books. That forgotten history is the story of Edson Marshall Hemingway. I've been researching Ed Hemingway for three years and it all stems from a story that my grandfather, Fred Fair, told me when I was a kid. That there was a professional baseball player from Sheridan, which no one in Sheridan had ever heard of. In the end, after doing a little bit of research, 20, well, 30 some odd years later, after he told me that story, I realized, because of the internet, that there was a professional baseball player named Ed Hemingway from Sheridan, Michigan. Ed was born on May 8th, 1893 in Sheridan. He was the only son of three children to Arthur and Kitty Hemingway. Arthur was a banker who had a job offer in Ionia, a city 16 miles south of Sheridan. Ed would have been around eight years old at the time. 1912. Edson starts his professional baseball career for the Lansing Senators while still a senior at Ionia High School. Ed the turn of the century and right up until the 30s, uh, there was very l little action in what you call men's league that wasn't almost professional, okay? At the end of the 1913 Senators season, Ed was drafted by the St. Louis Browns. So in 1914, uh, Ed's first year in Major League Baseball, spring training, his manager is a famous manager in Branch Rickey. Branch Rickey was a uh, strong supporter of bringing African-American ball players to Major League Baseball and he was successful in achieving that goal when he brought Jackie Robinson to the Brooklyn Dodgers. Ed was sent back to the minors to play for the Birmingham Barons. Ed Hemingway in 1915 played a a number of exhibition games playing against the uh, Pittsburgh Pirates and Honus Wagner. Ed Hemingway, born in Sheridan, Michigan, caught a fly ball that was hit by first round Hall of Fame inductee Honus Wagner. I love that story. Sunday, August 12th, 1917, the Houston Post declares Hemingway sold to New York Nationals, aka the New York Giants. He gets an opportunity at the end of 1917 to continue his baseball career at the major league level, and this might be his chance. 100 years ago, the Giants won the 1917 pennant, with Edson playing the final two weeks of the season. New York Giants play the White Sox in the 1917 World Series. Edson would not play during the 1917 World Series, only exhibition games. Even though he's not a, an official, on their official World Series roster, we have rec records showing and proving that he was in Chicago with the New York Giants during the World Series versus the Chicago White Sox. His teammate for those two weeks and then during the time during the World Series is U.S. Olympic champion Jim Thorpe. He went, went on to, to uh, win a number of gold medals in the 1912 Olympics. There was a fellow who ran the Olympics for almost 50 years who found out that he played professional baseball and took all of his medals away from him. Interestingly enough, his sons, he was chief of the tribe uh, when I met him uh, in the 80s, in the 70s or 80s, they finally got the Jim Thorpe's uh, medals back. Jim Thorpe and Ed Hemingway are standing next to each other in every single, or near each other at least, in every single New York Giants National League pennant championship photo that I've found. A boy from a small town, Sheridan, Michigan, could have been Jim Thorpe's a friend. They had to have gotten along. I really, I truly feel it in my heart. In one of the photos, it appears as if he's got his hand on 
Jim Thorpe's hip as if, you know, a celebration. He just happened to have his hand on his hip. I hope that Jim Thorpe and Ed Hemingway were friends. Hemingway left Saturday to join the Omaha team of the Western League. Ed Hemingway, who had gone to play in the Western League, had abandoned his contract and went to play for a team called Fairbanks Morse and he played in an independent minor league baseball league towards the end of 1920. And it was during that time period, Ed plays against the Decatur Staley baseball team owned by A.E. Staley. During those games, a young George Hallis, the a founding member of the National Football League, George Hallis, Chicago Bears owner, George Hallis, who was the athletic director and won a player for the Decatur Staley baseball team. I think he probably sees Ed Hemingway playing because they played against each other, decides that he wants to sign Ed Hemingway for the 1921 season, makes an offer. Ed goes to play for the Decatur Staley's in 1921, which then puts him in Decatur, Illinois, during the time period in which the National Football League is being developed, playing for the same organization that George Hallis is a member of himself. But I like to think that at some point he sat down and had discussions, or overheard discussions, that George Hallis had talking about the development of the National Football League. In 1922, Ed was sold to the Pacific Coast League. He played for multiple teams, most notably the Los Angeles Angels. These were his final years in baseball. Well, Edson is the everyday kid that wants to play baseball, tries really hard to play baseball. Many young people today that don't know or understand what baseball was in American history right up to, uh, into the 60s. Uh, baseball was the American sport. Football and basketball were not. Baseball was something you and your buddies could do uh, in the summertime. You pick up your bat and uh, go find a playground, find a field. If you don't even have a whole bunch of people, you can get together two or three of you and play one-on-one -on -one or 500. Ed was at, in all these different places, and I think to myself, money aside, you want to play professional baseball, you want to be able to pay your bills, you want to be able to make money at it, but I don't think Ed had any regrets looking back. He may have been frustrated from time to time, but the stories and the life experience that he had, the people that he met, I would think that made up for not being able to make a lot of money playing professional baseball. I am 40, <laughs> 46 years old, and my entire life, including a lot of other people in Sheridan, they had no idea. Ed Hemingway was buried in Sheridan, Michigan, a professional Major League Baseball player.